Many people often worry about birds when it's cold and stormy, and while birds aren't bulletproof against the harshness of winter, they do have some smart ways of getting through. Let's see what tricks they have up their sleeve. Birds have many physical and behavioral adaptations, such as their feathers which offer much insulation, therefore keeping them warm. And in late fall, a lot of birds, especially the ones of northern climates, will grow a few more extra feathers for added protection. They can also coat their feathers with oil that is secreted from their uropygial gland located at the base of their tail. The oil helps to waterproof their feathers and add more insulation. Have you ever noticed that birds look much bigger in the winter than in summer? Often, people think it's because they fattened up, and while yes, they do pack on a little extra weight, this isn't the only thing making them appear plumper. Another contributing factor is a behavioral adaptation called fluffing. To add more insulation, they fluff out their feathers to create tiny pockets of air between their skin and feathers. These air pockets are worn by the bird's body. The more trapped air, the warmer the bird. You were probably already aware that their feathers had to be a big culprit in helping them. But what about exposed body parts like their legs and feet? Well, there are some birds who actually have feathers on their feet, such as the ptarmigan, but a lot of birds don't, and yet they seem to do okay. That's because most birds have specialized scales covering their legs and feet that minimize heat loss. Another way they can reduce heat loss is by constricting the blood vessels in their feet. But even with all of this, some days are just too much and their legs and feet get cold. When that happens, they have one last trick up their sleeve, and that is tucking one leg at a time up into their body or crouching to cover both of their legs at the same time with their feathers. In fall, birds fatten up when food sources are in abundance. It's pretty common to see a flock of birds gorging on berries and seeds in fall. The fat reserves insulate them and provides additional energy to produce body heat. Some birds will also store food away in fall to prepare for winter when there won't be as much food available, such as chickadees, jays, and nuthatches to name a few. Normally food is hidden in tree crevices or on the underside of branches, places that snow won't cover over their cached food. Other birds can store extra food in their crop in the later part of the day to be used during the night thus keeping their furnace going all night long. Some of the birds that do this are rough grouse, red poles, crossbills, and many others as well. When it is exceptionally cold, birds will shiver, raising their metabolic rate to generate more body heat. However, this is only a short-term fix and it requires energy to do so. On sunny winter days, birds will often reap the sun's warmth by positioning their backs to it, allowing the rays to heat their skin and feathers. This helps to conserve their own energy because their body doesn't need to work as hard to generate heat to keep them warm since the sun is doing it for them. At night, temperatures often dip even lower. When this happens, some birds, such as chickadees or bluebirds, may roost together in a small tight spot in a tree or shrub to share body heat. Other birds, like nuthatches, will roost close to the trunk of a tree that may have heat left over from the day's sunlight. Crows often roost together in large flocks of hundreds or thousands to share body heat over the night. Other birds, like red poles and rough grouse, are known to roost a foot or so beneath the snow surface, a clever tactic as snow has great insulating properties to it. In fact, research showed that the temperature of the snow tunnels rough grouse roost in maintains a temperature of roughly minus 6 to 0 degrees Celsius despite how cold it is outside of it. And here's a bonus, nocturnal hyperthermia and torpor. It's a constant battle for birds to find enough food to meet the energy demands of winter, especially when it gets really cold or stormy. Some birds will gorge during the day to build energy reserves for the cold night ahead, Sometimes, though, there just isn't enough food, so to get through the tough nights and conserve their vital energy, many birds will use nocturnal hyperthermia, lowering their body temperature and thus their metabolic rate. Chickadees, nuthatches, morning doves, and downy woodpeckers are some of the birds that use this. 
Torpor is another method birds use and is a more extreme form of hyperthermia. It's also similar to hibernation, although not as extreme. Unlike nocturnal hyperthermia though, torpor isn't as widespread of a physiological response to food shortage. An example of birds that use this are hummingbirds. So there are some of the ways that these birds get through those harsh cold days. And my takeaway from this video isn't to not continue to worry about the birds. Indeed, good nutritional foods such as black oil or safflower seeds and soot is no doubt very helpful to them, as are heated bird baths and roosting boxes. So continue to offer them as much help as you can, but also keep in mind that these guys have many adaptations for surviving winter. To really make sure you help them out though, make sure to regularly clean your feeders and bird baths so no disease can spread. I will leave a link in the description box for how to properly clean them. If you found this video enjoyable or even helpful, give it a like. And subscribe for more content like this. I have plenty more videos about birds so if you're in the mood for more, here's a link to my Did You Know Birding playlist. If you want to see me interacting with my avian buddies, here's my birds and me playlist. Thanks for watching and happy birding!